The 1979-80 Red Deer Rustlers are one of the most storied teams in Junior A hockey, winning the Centennial Cup while compiling a 49-2 and 2 record. Team that was an average age of just under 17 years old when everything was cut and dried. Team that had never played together. Uh, it, all the pieces seemed to come together. That was probably like. That, that team, the bond on that team is a bond like I've seen on no other team that I've been really associated with. The road to the national championship started by winning the AJHL regular season crown. Brent Sutter was named league MVP and scoring champion with 171 points, which is still the league record. And John Chapman was coach of the year. I thought we'd start off slow, uh, young team. Uh, like I said, we had uh, one 20 year old and Big Bobby Badir, who we called Popsy, and he kind of looked after our young guys all the way through that year. And uh, started out with a young kid by the name of Garth Hildebrandt, 15 year old that was cut by the Bantam team in Red Deer. Uh, Ronnie and Rich Sutter, the Magpies, put them together as a line. They were our fourth line, and by, by Christmas time of that year, uh, they could play against anybody. One of the guys was a pretty skilled player. He decided he was going to go home, and he had an opportunity to go to work for the fire department or whatever, and he said to me on the way out the door, uh, as he said goodbye, he says, uh, he said, well, you know, I think if, if this team's got, you know, 16, 15 and 16 year old kids on this team, I don't, I don't think it's got a chance to win. And uh, after our trip through BC, Early on, uh, seeing the compete level of Ronnie and Rich Sutter, Garth Hildebrandt, um, seeing young defensemen like Daryl Anholt and um, you know 16-year-olds uh, play the way they played, and as physical and strong and skilled as they were, uh, when guys like Darren McKay, Glenn Johansson came back from the Western League, at that point I thought that this, this team we were already winning and uh, seeing those kids come back from the Western League and just knowing that, you know, at that moment, it was like, yeah, this, this team, you know, we're good and we're going to get better. In the playoffs, Red Deer ousted Sherwood Park and St. Albert before defeating the Calgary Canucks in five games to win the playoff title. From there, the Rustlers swept the Penticton Knights in four games to win the Doyle Cup as the Alberta BC champions, and then needed six games against the Prince Albert Raiders to win the Abbott Cup and qualify for the Centennial Cup. I had some moments where I was in a lot of trouble with suspensions and different things. Thank God I had Graham Parsons and Elf Cadman were able to step in and, and uh, uh, take the reins of the chuck wagon and let these horses run. But the winning and seeing the way these kids developed and, and so forth was uh, very special. The Rustlers defeated Ontario's North York Rangers 3-2 in the national final to claim the Centennial Cup crown, adding to the first title they won in 1971. I'd have to say, for me, it was it was a life changer. Um, you know, cliche or, or not, but uh, some of the habits uh, I was taught that year, some of the, the coaching, some of the people that I met, uh, you know, I think that's the thing that a lot of people forget when their kids are playing hockey nowadays, I see it so often, is, is that you know, even if they do become pro hockey players or whatever it might be that they aspire to be, that's a very short part of their life. Um, but for me to be part of that team and the people I met and the things I learned, uh, you know, changed and got me to where I'm at today.